going to be about Vistex and how Vistex is related to SAP in terms of its association with the systems um, and then what are the code modules um, of Vistex. Um, today as a demo I'm going to cover more of the sales incentives but um, the core modules are sales incentives, sales rebates or the customer rebates previously known as a CR, customer rebates, purchasing rebates, chargebacks, bill backs and the composite plan. So and then um, at the end of this demo session I'm also going to go through what are the training scope that would be for the full uh, Vistex training followed by the Q&A session. Again, this is a very generic thing. You guys should be knowing it already. Uh, Vistex is a third party tool. However, fully integrated with SAP um, Core R3. Um, simply put, Vistex um, help companies define, measure and pay or receive incentives and rebates. One, sorry, go ahead. So um, simply put, it just measures, it defines, measures, pays or receives incentives, rebates. It could be any form, you know, could be chargebacks, billbacks, claims, etc. But the fundamental concept is to um, it defines some kind of a rules and either pay or receive it to the third parties. It's an independent entity established in 1999 in um, Illinois, uh, USA. Became a significant um, SAP partner or equity partner in 2007. And um, unlike other third party plugins, it seamlessly integrates with ECC standard master data and transaction processes. That's a core advantage of Vistex. Unlike, for example, CRM, where we have to go through the middleware and have to fight that uh, BDOCs and um, other um, uh, middleware issues, you will not see that in Vistex. That's a core advantage of Vistex. Um, SAP calls it as a solution extension, not a third-party plugin, but they say, say, um, they say it's an extension of SAP. That's a value that they have given to Vistex. And of course, you use ABAP for any other enhancements around uh, Vistex. Going to the next one, um, its relation to SAP, how it's connected to SAP. If you can look at the system, the, the presentation here, the slide, the core ECC is surrounded by the modules. Most of you guys know this like SD, MM, PP, uh, production planning, quality, etc. And then finance, um, controlling, uh, asset management, product systems, etc., etc. On the right hand side you would see that plugins or add-ons, for example CRM, it's an add-on. Though it owned by SAP, it has to go through middleware. You need to set up the middleware, um, um, including and do the downloads, delta downloads, the initial downloads, and um, and then re replication issues, and then issues resolution, failures, a lot more complications involved. Uh, contrary to that, Vistex is core integration within the SAP itself. So that's an advantage of SAP, and that's how this is connected. Now. Let us assume you have a Vistex predominantly governs by the IP document. For any IP document, you need a source document. Extremely important point. And that source document will come from either SD or CRM or MM, which is a purchase orders 
Of course, if it has to come from CRM, then it has to replicate to ECC and ECC to Vistex. And then the actual calculations of the payouts, remember where we said is going to have to pay out to somebody, some third party, you know, could be employees, could be contractors, distributors, dealers, third party companies, doesn't matter, it has to pay out or we have to receive it, whatever that is. The source document will define what's the base price on which the incentives or commissions to be calculated. And the calculation rules would lie in IP document. Rules that would lie in agreement, however, on what price these rules have to be calculated will lie in IP document, pricing procedures. Once it calculates the payout, which we call accrual process in Vistex, then it does the settlement and the settlement happens in the FI side and it's fully integrated with FI as well. So this is how Vistex is closely interwoven with SAP system. Any questions at this point? I'm not seeing any um, questions being raised, so no. Okay, go okay. Ahead. okay. Now, core modules of Vistex: sales incentives or sales commissions, both are same. Sales rebates or customer rebates. Purchasing rebates, chargebacks, billbacks, composite plans. I'm going to go deep into the sales incentive for now. The rest of them we would cover in the regular training session. It's a lot more to cover, but due to lack of time, I'm going to cover the sales incentives to start with. A sales incentive, I simply put, it is an incentive paid for a sales by a company to its salespeople. Salespeople could be employees, contractors, commission agents, distributors, dealers, brokers, doesn't matter. If you are paying a dollar to help get a sale done, to a particular party, it's called sales incentives or commissions. In this example, in this scenario, the business process, what you're seeing, the left side you see the supplier, the employee, the customers, brokers. This is the typical party for any transaction, especially in the sales side. So there would be an agreement. Now Vistex starting point is an agreement. End point is settlement. If the agreement is between two different parties, for example, in a customer rebate, where the customer is a company by itself, there will be a written agreement between those two parties. In a normal situation where it is a sales incentives or commissions with the employees, there is no formal written agreement. There could be, especially sales plans, um, you know, there could be, but it's not mandatory or not required as a business process as such that a branch manager will sit down with the sales employees or territory manager. He would define the, the payout. And then in the SAP Vistex system, there must be an agreement. The agreement specifically specifies three things. The eligibility means who is eligible and what is eligible. Exclusions. Second thing is exclusion. What is excluded? If there are any exclusions, what are those exclusions? 
Uh, you may say that you can, you as a branch manager can tell to your sales rep that you have to sell 1000 iPhone 5s, but you cannot sell iPhone 4s because those are dead products. So you can define those exclusions in the agreement. The next step in the agreement is called actual benefits. How much you're going to pay to the employee for selling the thousand units. So always remember agreement is defined by three major components. Eligibility, exclusions, and actual benefits. So in this scenario, there is an agreement between the employees and the company, which is say um, uh, Apple, and brokers. Brokers are typically commission agents where they work for certain payout. So there must be an agreement clearly defined and we will do that configuration in Vistex. I'm not going to go to that level today session, but this will cover in the Vistex configuration. And then based on the commissions that we agree that we would pay to the employees, employees would go and sell in the market. That selling is not part of SAP, but it's a business process. Once an item has been sold in SAP, then we would do the sales order. We would do the PGI, we do the delivery, then do the PGI, then do the invoice. Once the invoice has been sent, based on the agreement that we have with our employees, like it could be that a sales employee paid every three months. This is an agreement. You could pay in six months, one year, or even one month. So those are the definitions or the terms that define the agreement. Based on that, Vistex will start accruing those values. It's very important that accrual comes before the settlement, last but two steps. The accrual happens due to this. If you define a period and you define your um, uh, benefits to be paid out to the employees, system has to accrue it from the day one. If it's a 12 month agreement with your sales employees from the day one to day two, um, month 12, 31st of December, it has to accrue it first. That accrual happens based on a source document. And that source document could be an order, a delivery, or an invoice. 90% of the time, it will be invoice will be a source document. Because company gets paid only when you collect the money. Selling someone something and not getting money, and then paying a commission over that, it will be a burden on the company. So the source document comes from the SG if it is a customer rebate or if it can come from the, um, um, the, the purchaser invoice. You know, when we invert, when you do the um, MIRO, purchasing invoice inverting, that could be a source document too because how much you purchase from the manufacturer, the back side of it which is a reversal of this one. We are doing the sales side, it could also be the procurement side of also. The procuring, uh, purchasing rebates, uh, this rebates that you can, agreements you can have with the manufacturer, the original manufacturer, um, that you are willing to um, um, offtake certain quantities and then you get paid, that's kind of commission. I can go through that next session. But now in the sales side, if you focus on this, from the SD standpoint, sales incentives, the invoice becomes the source document or even sales order also. I'm not seeing notes that, but that's the typical business process. So once the goods have been shipped, invoice has been sent to the customer, Vistex automatically starts accruing those values in Vistex backend. 
at the end of the predefined term, the term or, or the duration is defined in the agreement itself. At the end of the agreement, it will do the um, uh, settlement. Of course, there will be an approval process in between. There's a workflow. The good amount of workflows come into picture as to uh, to validate and verify those uh, values before they actually get um, settled and get paid out to the employees. So finally, sales incentives are paid out to the employees. Any questions uh, up to this point? Uh, I have a question here. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm Subhashini. And um, it's regarding like uh, whatever the process you told, it's just similar to rebates, like a rebate accrual process and settlement in invoice uh, based on the validity period, whatever we maintain for uh, rebate master data. So what yes. is the difference between that rebate and uh, the sales incentive? Sales incentives are predominantly for the employees. Customer rebates are with the third parties or the companies. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got that uh, point. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I just want to understand that uh, if we maintain a condition type for commission and uh, if we maintain the um, routine or something, uh, it will work the similar way, right? I mean, uh, how we are variating, uh, I mean, Vistex is different than SD module. SD yes, mod yeah, 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 sure. SD module has a limitations with the payouts. The SD module doesn't have the validity periods. You cannot, there are many, there are much flexibility in Vistex compared to SD or ECC as such. ECC also has the rebates and payouts in certain areas, but they're not as robust and as flexible as Vistex. That's the only, that's the main advantage. This SAP tried to kill Vistex long back, but they could not because of the flexibility. You can define the terms, you can define the validities, expiry dates, um, exclusions, eligibility, um, uh, within the eligibility, you can also exclude certain parties and include certain parties. There's a lot of flexibility that come in here where you don't see it in SD. That's the that's the only uh, difference. That's the main difference. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. We're going to the next one, we are looking at the business process. I'm going to get backside system process, how the mistakes behave in this scenario. So incentive agreement, as I mentioned, this is a starting step for any Vistex transaction. The first thing you would ask anyone of Vistex, if someone said this issue with the Vistex, you need to ask what is the agreement. There, everything is defined, everything, which employee is eligible, which employee is not eligible, which employee is eligible to sell something and not eligible to sell something, and if they are sold, how much they are eligible to get paid. They could be volume based, they could be value based, there could be many tier system that you can have, which ECC did not have this flexibility. The agreement that core area for Vistex. The reason I'm repeating again and again because you need to step into agreement in depth to see the issues in Vistex. The major issue that would pop up, like incentives not getting paid, sales reps in the territories are not getting fully um, uh, paid what they're supposed to get paid. Now, there could be various reasons why they're not. So this is the one area you would deep dive. Every agreement will consist of rules. The rules are called price sheets in agreement, which is nothing but the condition type and the condition table. So the rules are defined in two uh, main core areas. One is eligibility, 
and then second is the actual calculation rules how much you have to pay the all the three areas of the agreement are nothing but the conditions similar to pricing condition but they also called conditions you would define them as a conditions and assign them to the price sheets not to pricing procedures pricing procedures will come in ip document not in agreements agreement you only have price sheets which are combination of condition types and tables once this agreement is defined and made active and you have defined the source document in the um, IP document configuration which I would come to the uh, during next sessions in the training it would start accrual process it starts accruing the values over the given duration um, given period now here the accrual is defined by the IP document IP document will contain what the IP, if you can take a step back IP document has the pricing procedures the pricing procedures will define what value it should pick up from the source document for example in the invoice the source document for the IP document you would define pick up the base price from the invoice document plus anything else surcharges you know, um, or you can exclude the discounts. So if you can you can do that in the pricing procedures in the IP document. But so this is the crux of the whole thing that the pricing sheet which contains how much has to be paid to the sales employees plus the pricing procedures in the IP document which defines so from what values should be picked up from where on which the discounts are calculated that's the relationship link between these two these two documents based on that accrual will start now here you have two types of documents IP document has two types one is a transactional IP second is a composite IP Transactional IP starts accruing based on the transactions. For example, you have a special deal with a broker that he wants, he's ready to sell say $10 million worth of items to the government contract. It's a transactional IP and you agreed as a company that you will pay 5% to the broker very specific to that particular transaction and that's called transactional IP composite IP is where you accrue it for example the sales commission are paid over a year so you go for a composite IP where you define lot more rules lot more exclusions lot more conditions coming to picture and they, it will define in an year how much you had to finally pay out to your sales employee So here we do the accrual happens at this point of time. And then it goes for the settlement. Creation of settlement happens in the Vistex. Posting happens in FI, outside of Vistex. It, it goes to FI after it's accrued and settled internally in Vistex, then goes and posts in FI. So this is a system behavior for a sales incentives. Any questions at this point of time? So these sales employees, brokers, Hello? It's, uh, sorry, you went to mute again. It's like, 
Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I okay. am Vasu here. Yeah. Yes, Vasu. Where the sales employees brokers are defined, whether it will be defined, derived from ECC or it will be maintained in uh, Vistex? It's a good question. If it's integrated environment, all the master data is maintained in ECC. You can also maintain them in Vistex, but it's unnecessary. The only time you would maintain some master data in Vistex is during the um, GPO scenario, group purchasing organization where the members are associated with the GPO organization, you would define the membership in Vistex. Otherwise, you don't need them. It's in, it, they can lie in ECC. Okay. Uh, here I have, yeah, go ahead. And what about the source document to to the flow to the Vistex, whether it is a, any integration like maybe in APO, we yeah. have SIPs, correct? How it will be moved uh, or pulled the data from uh, ECC to Vistex? There are loads, the delta load and initial loads are there between Vistex and ECC, but we don't have to worry about it because they are automatically done. Okay. There's no manual intervention required once you do set up, set up done in Vistex correctly. You know, just we wanted to know whether any interfaces or maybe any RFCs. Uh, no, 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 no interfaces, no RFCs, no IDOC, no BDOC, nothing. Okay. The what about this settlement? Uh, the place also. Settlement place also no no further um, plugins or dance or any. Um, any kind of um, um, document flow would be required. I don't submit nothing. It's not like CRM. You don't have to do that. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I have a question. Uh, sure. But, um, for example, if they are uh, not using uh, for SAP HR, uh, if they are not using, but they are using the PeopleSoft kind of, but integrated uh, all other modules are in SAP. Uh, some clients will be like that. So right. in that case, of, in that case also, will it integrate with that, or in that case, do we need to create in this case the employees again? We can uh, either integrate. Yeah, it's a good question. We can either integrate any other third-party systems, or that that requires an enhancements, or we can also define the employees in Vistex itself. However, we have to make sure the conversion is correct. The employee numbers are correctly represented in both the systems correctly and their delta loads happen frequently. Okay, got it. Thank you. Because uh, the, hi Sumita the medic, here. Hi Sumita, go ahead. Uh sorry, you're explaining something. Please go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Okay, uh, my doubt is like how uh, the, I mean similar to Subhashini's uh, question. So if there is um uh, you're telling that the deltas are frequently loaded, right? Like, uh, but how consistent the data will be? Like, if it can be uh, some some mismatch between the delta loads, right? Like, uh, some that will be the data um, replication. At the time of the replication, we need to. See, that's only initial times where you would face this problem, not in a delta load time. You know, mm -hmm. garbage in and garbage, garbage in and garbage out. We can't help it. Okay. You know, you you will not be able to do anything in Vistex if the employee ID did not match. Okay. Uh, that, that is more of the you know uh, the data issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you, but there will be issues. But as the system will not create any IP documents if the, the if it did not record did not match. Okay, uh, so you, it's just a delta load. There, I mean, as you mentioned earlier, there is no um, um, data flow like uh, IDOX or LSMW or uh, no, 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 no any interfaces or anything like that. No, just, no. just a delta load. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's the beauty of Vistex. Mm, okay. And uh, I, I'm sorry, I think I missed. What does IP document mean exactly? Okay. okay. IP document. Is incentive, uh, remember this is inter incentives and payout document. Incentive and payout. Yeah, okay. it just, it's a system driven document. You don't do it, ma for example, you create a sales order in SD, 
-hmm. and you create an incentive agreement in Vistex, but you don't create an IP document manual. System creates by itself. Yeah, that, that's what I understood. Like the uh, the source document, it could be an invoice that comes from ECC, and uh, based on you, that, you create an IP document in Vistex system. Correct. Vistex system, you point in the IP document, you point which the for the source document. Yeah, okay. And you point I mean, that's the again like a you do the configuration again, like Correct. how we do in ECC. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So okay. the configuration steps in this process will be the incentive agreement. Mm -hmm the rules, mm -hmm. eligibility criteria, mm -hmm. exclusions, mm -hmm. IP document header level and item level, there are two, two here, one will be header level IP document configuration, item level IP document configuration, mm -hmm. then composite IP if it's a composite IP type, mm -hmm. accrual, settlements. Okay. These are the main areas of the configuration that you would see in this scenario or most of the scenarios, many of them, there will be some minor differences here and there. But predominantly the configuration starts with the IP um, agreement followed by the IP document. Of course, there will be associated profiles configuration, for example, pattern determination, text determination. Okay. There will be a lot, lot more like SD similarly, but these are the core areas. Okay. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, Kumar. Welcome. Okay, so any questions, any further questions? So training, this is only demo session as to um, are defined as one area of it. So the training of the entire course will cover the Vistex modules, all the Vistex modules, both the business processes and the system processes. The configuration and customization of agreement, agreement request. Agreement request is a predecessor to agreement. And you can open the agreement request to the third parties. Suppose you as a company selling a large, um, have a deal with another company to sell something. That company can log into your portal and then create an agreement request. That agreement request, you can review it, approve it, reject it, or edit it, then that's become an agreement. The reason being, there are like thousands and thousands of vendors and customers for a company. So it's impossible to one party sit down and do this agreement, so they have given the agreement request as a preceding document that is available for those third parties to log in and create those requests which will be reviewed by you as approver through the workflows and then release it and that will become a binding agreement in the mistakes. That's the agreement request. Then followed by the IP document, what um, the configuration areas, header level, item level and associated profiles. The profiles are predominantly um, text determination, part determination, status profiles, um, and there are some more, like a typical SD side of it, in a drop down menu, you can get a lot more color combinations, color code, cosmetic stuff you can see, um, but we would cover them in the regular class, but this is some of the profiles we have to configure. Composite plans, very important. The account assignment, uh, as you guys know, it's a key link that connects a Vistex document to FI. Similarly, account assignment between SD that connects between SD to FI. We have to account um, assignment um, that will that will tell to where this um, payout should be posted in the FI. So that connection that's an important link between FI and Vistex. Then the accruals configuration, settlements, and then reporting. So uh, this, the difference between SAP and Vistex is, Vistex the blank page. You don't see a defined sales. So for example, if you have to go to third party sales order, regular sales order, you go to SAP SD, um, OR or TA, you can pick up copy as and release it. And then uh, save it as, and then you make the minor changes. If you can still be able to run the system. 
in Vistex you don't see them. There's nothing called a original document as such. You have to create from scratch entire profiles, entire areas, the columns, um, the fields have to be configured. That is the drawback or you can say that is a advantage of Vistex in the sense that for the consultants, you don't see many consultants because it's not a self-learning tool. That's the drawback of that or um, that's, how it, they, that's how they wanted it. And you don't see any documentation for configuration. They don't release it. Um, even if you create one and post it in YouTube, the next day you get legal notice. So I know a couple of friends who got legal notice of Vistex to, to take them off. So these are the kind of issues we have. But um, so everything is left to your imagination. There is no hard and fast copy as easiness that we do in SDR CRM that we don't have that. So just need to be aware of it. Um, if any settings are wrong, you will see them in the errors. You have to go back and make the corrections. Those things will always be there. Um, and it's a purely by learning. There's no documents that you can refer to the configuration. So that ends the demo for today. Um, any questions? Anything that I can answer at this point of time? Um, Sampath, I have many questions. If others are done, I'll, I'll be asking sure. because yeah, I please. joined late. Sure, please I joined. Yeah, if anyone else uh, want to go ahead, please go ahead. Uh, that's fine. Go, go ahead, Subhashini. We would like to hear, like, uh, we would like to share the knowledge, whatever doubts you have or questions. It's it's good to hear. That's okay. Okay, Sinta, thank you. Yeah. Uh, one moment. Uh, actually, uh, I would like to know uh, if, for example, CRM is implemented uh, uh, for a client and mm -hmm. if they also want to go with Vistex. Mm -hmm. So, uh, will that work or I mean how it will integrate, I mean? Is the CRM is a standalone CRM or does the ECC involved there? ECC also involved. Yeah, so typical process will be a sales order done in CRM has to replicate to ECC because deliveries will happen in ECC, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, so then there's no problem here. Uh, that same sales order will communicate with mistakes in ECC. Then we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we don't have to worry anything okay. about it here. The only thing will be if you have a territory management in CRM mm -hmm. where you're paying incentives through the territory management, then we would have a minor issue here because territory management is a CRM structure, not an ECC structure. It doesn't recognize territory management. Mm -hmm. So you have to map a backend Z table to pull those territories into Z table, or you can map the sales group because if you if you do not have a sales group concept, not sales officers, but under sales officers you have a sales group concept. You can map the territories in CRM to sales group in ECC, and then pull them into Vistex or you also have a sales group concept which is nothing but assistant branch. Um, mm -hmm. Plus you have a territories in CRM then you prefer you should go for a Z table in ECC which would then communicate with this text to tell from which territory this person is uh, belongs to. That way you would assign those uh, um, the, the approvals in the, the, the territories. It's a little bit of enhancement required here. Okay. Yeah, just I thought of checking with you, like, is that possible or because uh, where uh, CRM implemented, uh, like, pricing is itself big, big task, normal pricing because yes. uh, all configuration download should happen and VM3 should happen. But I guess in this, in this scenario, pricing is also should be in ECC, but you're downloading to CRM, correct? Yeah, in our scenario, yeah. yes. Yeah, then, 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 yeah, then this issue at all because invoicing um, happens in ECC. ECC. Yeah, so you should be good. I, there's no issue. I don't think there's an issue here. Um, but yes, I agree with you. The complications comes where the commissions are involved, territories are involved, then you have a little bit of complexity here. Okay. okay. I just thought of checking with you. Like, is that sure. possible? Currently, it's not implemented. Just I thought of checking with you. Is that possible? Sure. Or not? 
Yeah. Hi, Kumar Sunita here. Uh, I mean, to add on uh, Subhashini's question, like, if there is a client who is uh, um, asking a recommendation if Vistex is needed to implement in for their business or not, what kind of uh, parameters do ha do some one, I mean, a, a consultant or anybody should consider to suggest if it's really needed or not? Like, it's it's a costly affair, right? Like Vistex if implementing it uh, or to uh, for their uh, project to go say yes or no, how how would one consider if it's really needed? Yes, um, it is more of a solution architect role. Um, so there are a couple of things you need to consider. One is how complex. First of all, what are the areas that your company is involved in? Is it only sales incentives? Or is it customer rebates only, or chargebacks, billbacks? You know, uh, what are the areas that your company currently involved with? Mm -hmm. If there are, the areas are large, that too many areas are involved. That's one point. Second point is how complex these payouts are. So okay. Especially when you have a group organizations, group sales organizations, like for example, Walmart. Walmart is actually one same company, but there's some some other company where they sell in bulk to the companies who then distribute, it's called GPO, group purchasing organization, those are complex structures. So those need to be evaluated and how current settlement is happening in their own systems. Is it highly complicated, highly manual, labor intensive, and there's a leakage of the profits in the system. People are seeing the money is going out without proper evaluation, proper authentication, then the Vistex is a good way to go. Oh, okay. Okay. You need, yeah, so those are areas you would evaluate, but if the smaller companies, then you need to really see that it's worth doing it. So uh, I agree with you, but it requires some um, uh, real Analy situation. Analysis, yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct, correct.